Hello, Info China lovers. Andrew Charles here, CompNow's Chief Revenue Officer, and I'm joined today by Jerry Vochtelo, uh, Dell's APJ Field CISO. Jerry, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Oh, it's a it's a pleasure pleasure to have you. Um, uh, look, firstly, uh, a big thank you in, uh, to Dell uh, for our award a couple of weeks ago um, at Dell Forum, and it was a client award. And we're not talking about client today, but but some of the things that you do talk about actually relate to. Uh, the endpoint in, in, in many different ways. Um, let's kick it off, Jerry. Uh, Dell has invested uh, you know, tens of millions of dollars in its cybersecurity practice uh, over the last you know, 15 to 20 years. Um, the market is moving very, very quickly at the moment. Um, what are the most sort of persistent threats that you're noticing when you get out and about and you talk to uh, CISOs you know, at, at partners and, and, and at, at customers, um, you know, businesses? What are they seeing and, and what is Dell doing to help those customers really secure their business at the, at the highest level? Look, look in terms of threats, um, you know, the digital transformation is driving a whole gamut of new technologies, um, AI being a prime example, right? Um, and we, we're still, as, a, as an industry, trying to work out how those things fit in, what the threats are. Um, again, AI is a great example, right? We're learning more and more about, about you know, how those things can be subverted, um, you know, embedding uh, commands into text. You know, we're seeing those sorts of attacks happening yeah. quite often. Um, at Dell, we kind of take a unique view of of, of security. Um, you know, Dell is the essential infrastructure company. We provide infrastructure and storage to, you know, millions of customers around the world. Um, and we kind of look from the ground up. So we care about an organisational uh, organisation's data, right? So. What we're seeing quite a lot is um, organizations are shifting away from a purely defensive strategy when it comes to security um, because it, it's almost we need to take a presumptive threat uh, approach, right? And right. that's not, that's not a um, if it will happen, this is when it will happen. So where we look at is how do we help you recover your data? How do we protect your data when a cyber event happens? And how do we help an organization recover quickly uh, after a cyber event um, ha has occurred? So that, that's kind of our focus. So, you know, we're, we're not a traditional security company in terms of firewalls and although we do sell firewalls, uh, but, uh, you know, in terms of that defensive uh, antivirus, um, you know, um, all those sorts of things, we really come from that infrastructure up. Yeah, and from a lot of, uh, from, uh, yeah, uh, our cloud, for example, is built on um, Dell ECS storage and there's a lot of smarts that are built into that to, you know, for example, air gap, um, you know, a, a client's data or, or, or backup regime. Um, do you want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, we're, we're taking a strategy across our platform. So that's our storage platforms, that's our backup platforms, that's our block storage, our object storage, which ECS is. And we're looking to create a uniform layer of um, security controls. So, um, you know, in the past, if you look at uh, look at our technologies, we may have had you know one technology supports this type of multi-factor authentication, another yep. technology, another, uh, because they are different. You know, there were different development streams, but we're trying to pull that together now to help our clients um, build a more robust security uh, position. So, you know, we now have things like our, our Power Store and our Power Max and our ECS, uh, which is now called. Um, object scale, uh, and our backup tools all support the same type of multi-factor authentication, uh, all support similar capabilities in terms of locking data. So, you know, on, on our storage platforms, we're able to make data immutable, so it can't be deleted. So if ransomware comes in, for instance, and tries to delete um, your, your production data, um, it's unable to do so because that data is locked. So we're kind of building that foundational resilience layer uh, for our clients. So, so Jerry, um, yeah, zero trust is no longer a buzzword, uh, but a necessity. Uh, how has Dell embedded zero trust principles into its infrastructure and what makes Dell's approach unique to organisations in, in APJ? 
That's a long question. Um, <laughs> look, at the, the, and you'd like that. And, and, and so. look, the, the, the problem is definition of zero trust, right? So when you talk to security teams uh, about zero trust, it can mean many different things. So there's many different zero trust standards. Uh, NIST have one. Uh, the uh, American government military's got one. Um, and they're basically a set of controls that that um, basically remove the trust barriers inside your organization, right? So, you know, um, if you look at things, if you authenticate once, you're immediately authenticated to everything, right? And, and that's not, that goes against zero trust. So we actually have uh, a project uh, called Project Ford Zero, which is, yeah, right. uh, which is actually a, um, um, compute infrastructure that is built to the DOD um, zero trust standard. Yeah, so right, wow. uh, all the 100 plus controls to be able wow. to do that. So we, we've got that for people who truly want to adhere to a, a zero trust um, architecture and set of standards. But from, a, from the rest of our product, it's really, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, making sure that our our products are able to support things like multi-factor authentication, but also things like um, preventing admins from doing things. So we talked about um, immutability before mm. or ma making data read only. Yes. Um, that that is done in a way that administrators can't override that, right? Because it's no use having um, the ability to override that because the threat actors will get your credentials or whatever they need to do or bypass multi-factor authentication uh, and then able to delete that data. So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're really looking at when we design these things of a untrusted insider yep. or a trusted insider um, or someone with their credentials being able to, to, to limit that damage. Mm. Um, the, the other bit that you, kind of talked about is one of the things we've been doing for the last probably 12 years is looking at creating isolated copies of our data. So right. you may have heard of our Cyber Vault, um, which yeah. is our, our backup technology, the ability to put your backups into an isolated, call it a safety deposit box, right? Um, you know, put it somewhere so it's not connected to your corporate network. So even if all of that is untrusted, you've got a safe copy, just like if someone breaks into your house, your valuables are in your safety deposit box. Yeah. We can do that with storage as well. So we have reference architectures for our block storage, our object storage yes. as well, where we can create that secondary isolated copy um, that is insulated from uh, cyber events and gives you a recovery position. And that, that's, look, that's a really good segue, Jerry, into what we're seeing at the moment in the hyperscaler landscape. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of organisations you know, raced in you know, six, seven years ago or even earlier um, and started putting all their, 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 their trust and faith in you know, the, the hyperscalers. I'm not going to mention any names, but every, I think everybody knows who I'm talking about. Um, most recently, we're seeing organisations now really wanting to adopt either a, a private cloud approach or a, or a hybrid cloud approach. What do you think the reason behind this is? Look, I, I, I think, and, and we were all involved seven years ago, right? Yeah. Um, yeah and look, and I think seven years ago, my, my question always was when I was talking to, to clients of ours is why are you moving to cloud? And if the answer was cost, it, it was a project that was doomed for failure, right? Of course. Um, there are many reasons to put workloads in cloud, absolutely 100%, but there's also many reasons to keep workloads on-prem. Right, and to, um, to to build workloads in an environment where you control the entire stack, right? So if you need to change retention policies, if you need to change the way you authenticate, if you need to do any of those sorts of things, you're you're able to do this. So I think what we're seeing is a whole stack of things were moved into cloud, um, and then organisations are looking at them now, going. Um, this doesn't make sense in cloud. This uh, application never shuts down. Right, um, you know, applications where where things spin up and down, they're great in cloud. You consume the resources when you need them, and you spin them back down when when you don't need them, right? But you know, stuff that runs forever, in many cases, the the TCO uh, for running that on prem is exactly the same. So we're seeing that, and and we're seeing security can can. Um, it becomes hard if you're trying to create security policies and especially if you have regulatory requirements to mm. report back to a, a, a regulatory authority, 
to now have two domains, right? So when I'm on-prem, I've got my security experts, I've had them for the last 20 years, they know what they're doing, they know exactly what's happening. When you start picking up some of those controlled workloads and put them into cloud, you've now got a completely different set of skills required. Right? So you can't take your existing security teams and say you now also own cloud because that is a completely different set of skills. And I've worked with clients where that bit has become too hard. It, it's it. just the re regulatory burden around that. So absolutely, a lot of my clients are still going into cloud with lots of different workloads and they make sense. Yeah. But I think in, in Australia anyway, I see the majority now where um, organisations are, are uh, what's called, you know, right cloud. Yes. They're, they're choosing the right cloud. Yeah. And that cloud may be um, a, a cloud offering by a, a partner. Correct. Like, like you like guys. Now. Like CompNow, for instance. <laughs> right? That, that like CompNow cloud, right? Yeah, so, correct. Yeah. And, Dell and Dell architecture, right? But, but um, I, I don't know a single client that uses a single cloud. No. Right? Because we've realized that Google does this really well and um, Amazon does this really well and Wasabi does this really well yes. and CompNow does this really yeah. well. Yeah. Right? And you choose the right cloud. And I think understanding the customer's needs is, 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 is critical. Correct. Um, it's interesting because De Dell is a big supply chain business. Comp CompNow is a a smaller version of, of Dell in many ways. You know, we've got you know, a lot of warehouses uh, around the country. We've got a logistics centre down the road here at, at, at 294 Ferntree Gully Road. Um, and uh, I found it really interesting listening to, to John Rose, uh, your global CTO and head of your AI practice yep. globally, uh, talk about, um, you, know, um, you know, AI, the, the, the birth of AI and, and now being in its fourth wave. Um, but really, I found it intriguing listening to him talking about how um, you know, Dell had invested just a huge amount of money and time in, in machine learning that's evolved into agentic AI and now the administration of agents across your entire business to effectively uh, assist with, with performance, assist with managing data better than humans uh, and the net result is huge time and cost savings um, by effectively eating your own Dell dog food, right? And, and ultimately, um, you know, rolling out the, the, the required infrastructure at the edge of your network um, to deliver this unbelievable, um, uh, incredibly uh, intuitive uh, and efficient supply chain to the market. Like we've seen it internally, right? Right now I can tell you Dell supply chain compared to other uh, competitors out there is it's a really unique value proposition. I um, mean, it's, it's quite exciting. You know, if, you, if, you're, if you're an organization that consumes uh, you know, vast volumes of, of compute, so high performance compute nodes or even client devices, just being able to get that technology to your customer or to a specific user really, really efficiently is, is quite, uh, quite incredible how, uh, how far that's come. Um, you obviously are involved in making sure that, that, that all those pieces are, are, are put together um, and you're doing that at region, but are you seeing other organizations now adopting Dell's strategy in that space? Uh... Look, supply chain's difficult, right? Um, mm. And from a security point of view, there's a lot more focus now on third-party risk, right? So um, your security protocols and your security position may be, may be great, but what about that vendor that you're using or that piece of software you're using? And we've seen things like solar winds, right, mm. as, a, as a supply chain attack where it wasn't, you know, the organisation that was attacked, but a, a piece of software that most organisations probably had in, in, in their environment. Mm. Um, so we're seeing this increased focus on supply chain. And, you know, if you think about where Dell started from, you know, Michael Dell's what he did to start yeah. this company was really about just-in-time yeah. supply chain, right? Yeah. So Dell's been doing supply chain for a long time. A long time. Um, so yes, look, I, I think uh, a lot of other customers are, are, are looking at um, not necessarily uh, doing what we're doing, but looking at um, taking the Dell supply chain and you know the security of our supply chain and everything we do, you know from chip to motherboard to assembled server to arriving on your premise to secure that uh, from a chain of custody perspective, right? So when you are building your infrastructure, at least that that's that that infrastructure layer is secure and that that is really really important i always talk to clients about um, it's lovely to invest in ai or whatever the, the the new technologies are but as infrastructure professionals security professionals we need to to 
I always call it the safety net. Yes. Right. So the acrobats can do what they want and and do the latest tricks and whatever it is. But if something goes wrong, more likely when something goes wrong, we've got that safety net at the infrastructure layer. Right. The ability to recover from snapshots, the ability to recover from backups, if breaches occur because of a lack of um, operational uh, op sec ops. Um, then we're able to protect that data, roll that data yes. back, and all those sorts of things as well. And that's you know that's where Dell's been playing for a very long time. Yeah, there's nothing worse than um, ending up with someone else's high performance compute node, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, but look, it's been really it's been really refreshing, um, you know, uh, speaking with you this morning, Jerry. It's always a pleasure. And last question is. Um, Things are moving fast. Um, you're at the very sort of bleeding edge of it. You're, you're, you're having updates from 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 you know region and global. Um, you're engaging with all of the, the the top hierarchy, you know, technical hierarchy at Dell. What does the future hold over the next eighteen months to two years? What what, what can we expect to see out in the market? Uh, look, uh, Dell's very focused on AI at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> as you can imagine. I think you're ahead of the curve. To be honest, like, actually, I actually think. You are way ahead of the curve, um, you know, and you know, sort of going back to your presentation a couple of weeks ago at Dell Forum, and then the partner uh, principal event, um, and listening to John Rhodes really go very deep into how Dell is approaching yeah. uh, everything AI related. Uh, it's it's quite fascinating. And, and our AI factory is is you know is a, is a classic example of. I'm glad you touched on that because I was going <laughs> to ask you about it. So good. Is is how we build. Um, how we build meaningful AI for, for our clients. So it's not just about hardware, but it's about process. It's about selecting, you know, what, what projects we're going to kick off and, and all those sorts of things. Mm. But again, we we look at doing that responsibly, right? So we look at building it on infrastructure that's secure to start with and that has all of those modern security um, controls built into it. We are doing a lot of work around what else within. So we protect the infrastructure and we've done that for a long time, yes. but we're now looking at that the AI application that's running on top of that infrastructure, how do we protect that? So you know, our professional services, for instance, can do uh, a managed AI firewall uh, with with one of our um, with that, one of our other partners. Um, so we're spending a lot of time looking at, uh, I, I guess the question of right back to the start of our conversation, we, we don't know what all the security controls around AI need to be yet. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of standards around that already, of but course. but they're continuously expanding. Uh, and and from a Dell perspective, we're looking to offer that innovation platform to clients, but hopefully present it in a way that's secure uh, and that that gives them that safety net to go and experiment and and go build amazing things that we see um, all of our clients doing. Yeah, so very exciting over the next 18 months. I reckon even the next year we're going to see some amazing things built on, on Dell infrastructure uh, with our partners and with our clients. No, really, really awesome. Well, look, guys, um, for any uh, questions relating to the topic that we've discussed today or for any information on any, any of Dell's uh, portfolio of technology, we're obviously a Dell Titanium partner at CompNow. Uh, please uh, contact us at sales at compnow.com.au or reach out to your local BDM. Jerry, absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. No, Travis, it's, it's and, uh, been awesome. Look forward to catching up with you soon. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. Do. Take care. Thank you.